Right, so what is this all going to be about? I'm going to try for the first time ever to do a online demonstration of how to actually write a component in Next uh, from scratch. I'm also going to try to write a test instrument for said component from scratch um, while you're all watching uh, and listening to me saying stupid things. So, uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> this is a little bit spooky. So what I wanted to be doing is a semi-reflective mirror component, which um, is kind of an optics thing to have. Uh, Neutron people might not want it, but uh, it's uh, I I think it's a nice component because it's. Well, it's, it becomes very simple, and it actually gives me the opportunity to show off a Monte Carlo trick that is quite useful. Now, I'm sufficiently weird. I actually use VI, uh, so, um, <laughs> and so I do have my cheat sheet here. So the first thing I do when writing a component is go into insert mode and write something like without this and I need a define component and I have to get used to the Mac keyboard as well uh, sorry about this so the component has to have a name and it has now. It also needs some definition parameters and some setting parameters. And the difference between these two kinds of parameters is that setting parameters is something that are um, actual numbers. Definition parameters can be anything. The real, the real differentiation difference between this kind of, these kind of parameters um, is something that's related to the way the generated C code actually works. For those of you who speak C, uh, a definition parameters is realized by a define uh, setting parameters realized by an actual variable. So, and um, yeah, but uh, there are parameters that come from outside. Um, so I need my mirror needs a width, a height, and um, a reflectivity. I'll just call it one to begin with. Yes. Oh, right. Um, maybe if you make it black and white instead, if you go in the terminal up yep. there and preferences, I think. Yep, preferences. You can get some other view of the window, so pull that, yeah. There. The choice box, try and get Basic. it like that. Oops. Oh, that's not startup. So view it is. Sorry, view. Oh, the other menu. Oh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Bigger. Bigger, yeah. That's that's an option. Uh, it's oh, bigger. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's bigger. bigger. That's yeah. even bigger. Apple Plus. Oh, nice. Huh? I'm not going to press Good. the bloody apple. <laughs> 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 Who do you think I am? <laughs> right. And uh, for those of you who sat nearby me at dinner time, you <coughs> heard about that you can call the neutron state parameters whatever you want. Um, um, banana, for instance. I'm not going to be using banana, 
I will be using um, the standard vector really for this kind of thing and uh, so the the starting point for the, this whole header for this uh, component you would actually never ever write it from scratch you would copy it from some standard component and just erase whatever is there so you uh, you, um, you would not forget any of the any of the things that go so there is a in in components in generally speaking uh, at some okay does anyone know where the curly braces is on this thing? Uh, yeah. I do. Yeah. So uh, maybe if I switch on the light on the keyboard, you might even see something later on. Okay, nice. So if you do, uh, I think we uh, something stupid like Shift Alt and uh, where you would expect them to be, yeah. right? Okay. So parentheses and right. Yeah. So uh, components can have a share section. I'm not going to be using it. <coughs> They can also have an initialize section, um, and I'm not going to be using that either. And you will see that components actually behave pretty much like instruments. Um, one difference is that the trace section is actually surrounded by curly braces and percentage signs. So we now have sort of a skeleton for uh, for this component and uh, as you can as I said it pretty much resembles uh, instruments um, in terms of the there is a initialize section in this case there's a share section there can actually be a declare section as well and so on uh, and the trace section so the way I think of this mirror is that I shall let it be positioned um, on the z0 plane or in the in the xy plane at z0 and um, I can choose that because then I let the uh, whole maxdas system just position it uh, using the regular parameters in the uh, in the instrument file and I don't I can choose that it is on the xy plane because it can be rotated by any by other such means uh, later on to whatever user the users want. So, first thing I need to do is something that you may want to remember. I use a macro called proxy zero, which basically means that I transport my neutron to where to the plane where z the z coordinate is zero, which means the mirror plane. So, I have done that to my neutron. And uh, so what I will do now is figure out whether or not this neutron will actually hit my mirror. I think of it as a rectangular object, so with a width and a height. So I just need to check whether the neutron's new coordinates at the Z0 plane is in fact bigger than half the width. And it has to be less than Sorry, it has to be less than half the width um, and bigger than minus half the width. And the same goes for the height. Oops, if I can spell it right. Um, y has to be bigger than minus half the height. And Y has to be less than And th if that is the case, then we should do some processing on this neutron. Um, and um, what processing it is supposed to be done is it's supposed to be reflected. Now, I have considered it to be on the xy plane, and a neutron coming in will just have its x or its uh, z component of its velocity switched. So I do 
like this. I call. And that's pretty much it. Except that I also want to tell the system that I have interacted with this uh, with this component. So therefore, I set use the keyword scatter. And now, this was supposed to be a semi-reflecting mirror. So this is a fully reflecting mirror. Now, anything that hits the mirror will get reflected, so I have to do something else. I have to do some more stuff here. I declare a variable, which I call r, and I get a random number. And, and then I say, if this r is less than the reflectivity of the mirror, then I should do the actual reflecting. If not, I use scatter to set a waypoint. And why is all this stuff? <laughs> this random number I <laughs> well, it's supposed to be Monte Carlo, so um, if you set a reflectivity to this mirror, say that it's half, to be really semi-reflective, semi only half of the neutrons should be reflected and half of them should be passed through. And so I ask for a random number between 0 and 1 and say that if it's smaller than the reflectivity that I've gotten from outside, uh, yeah. Which is not actually depending about round zero and one that you need to speak. No, this, uh, this is totally un unphysical. I assume oh, okay. I assume that God has reached down and given me a reflectivity. Um, I know that is kind of unphysical. And uh, then we only have to do one other thing. which is, if we do miss the mirror, remember that I checked here whether or not the <coughs> position of the, of the neutron at the Z0 plane is within this, this square called my mirror, then I should do stuff to it. But if it misses, I, have, I should actually be nice to the other components around me and put it back where it was before I had transported it to my plane. So this I shall do here by calling restore neutron. And um, this is kind of a This is not very nice. Um, it needs this long um, this long list of parameters. Uh, it is a thing that has not been sort of streamlined because it's not uh, well. We haven't. Uh, it's it's a legacy legacy thing that we still haven't sort of straightened out because. Uh, this whole restoring of neutrons was not really something that we were doing in a large, uh, uh, doing very often earlier on. But uh, we have realized that it's actually a good idea to waste some CPU cycles putting neutrons back. So we do, um, because it uh, makes life a lot easier. Um, and uh, that's actually that. We now have a, have a a semi-reflecting mirror that can have a reflectivity of something. Now, um, another, if you look at components in the library, you will find that they have a 
another section called MC Display. And this is something that has a kind of a weird syntax. But it is where you specify how your component is drawn when you do a trace 3D. In which, so it's actually quite useful to spend some time just uh, doing this, uh, to actually do, figure out how to uh, display your, your component because that is what people will see and that is also what people will be using for debugging. Uh, when, you, when you look at your instrument and try to figure out where did my neutrons go. It, if it is badly displayed or uh, if the description of it, the graphical description of it is not very good, then uh, you might be even more confused. Um, so there are ways of doing this. Um, I shall do it with something called a multi-line where I have to specify the coordinates one by one. So it just, oops. And what's multiply space for? Um, that's basically a legacy thing that you more or less have to ask Peter. It's always there. Well, yeah. I'm not entirely sure if this is per se needed, but it is indeed a legacy that has to do with this. I, I think you you actually only saw. Uh, the top view of the instrument ever with the PG plot. But it's actually possible to get three panels. So you have both the uh, XZ plane, which is what you usually saw, and then the YX plane and the YZ plane. And then you would actually do magnify to enter each of these planes and do visualization. Right? So it would be separated like that. But as you see, the multi-line is uh, three-dimensional. Eric is uh, is giving corners of of uh, of the mirror in in all uh, in all dimensions. Right? Yeah. I should also put zeros. For yeah, that's uh, exactly what I mean. That's why I also did. Oh, oh waiting. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, it means that there is a multi-line with five corners in it. <coughs> So one, two, three, four, and then you have to go back to make it a full square. So I just display this using a square. I think actually one of the lesser known uh, macros for drawing is uh, rectangles. But yeah, it, you know, this is, um, I, I know they <laughs> exist, but I'm unfortunately, I can't, I don't know exactly how to use it. So. Okay. Um, <laughs> possibly, yes. So. Um, and uh, there you have it. Um, I shall do it like this. And I shall now try to make a test instrument in which I can use it. Um, possibly I can get a new terminal vin window. Meter in. Meter in. You touched the Yeah, you yeah, did. I did. <laughs> and I shall touch it again to make it bigger. Uh, no. It, you have to place it inside the library folders if it if you want it to be usable everywhere. Uh, otherwise, you can just have it in the same folder as you have your <coughs> instrument file. That is where Maxtas will look for it. So, so could you display your file on the cat or something? That's why I opened another window. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so I will have to go to the other window to write a an instrument file that uses this thing. I think you were in demo with capital D or something like that. Yeah, this is right. So I do the um, I shall call it test. That is very good. Do have my cheat sheet, cheat sheet here, and as you know now, know you define an instrument, and it has a name. I call it test, and it has a 
reflectivity, which I and I really need to do nothing else than Please stop me if there is any questions as such. Otherwise, I'll. How do we know all these keywords? Um, they are documented, they are documented uh, in, in two places. Uh, you have your general user manual that effectively is the end user manual, and then you have the component manual. And I think actually there's even an overlapping uh, chapter in that that describes uh, these keywords, but in any case, it's uh, outlined in, in the component manual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a chapter there for you, uh, and you for, for, writing, uh, for writing performance. And you will be uh, PS to all the keywords or something like that? Um, this would require more uh, insight, I would say. Uh, of course, it's, it's possible. It uh, is really in a part of the code we didn't discuss, but we used all the time. Mm -hmm. So, Max Stats includes code generation. It's built up at, uh, on an old compiler technique. Uh, on, on some tools called Leg and Yak that actually builds from a set of keywords, it, keywords it uh, builds code essentially. So it builds automatically a parser from your language definition if you like. Mm -hmm. And this is where you define the macros. This is where you define the little snippets of code that actually when you write restore, neutron, some parameters will, will reset those to the original value etc. And, and this is really, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a physicist, uh, and, and we call this all uh, uh, on, on the project these days. But this is really the legacy of uh, of the computer computer scientists who who draw the the sketch of, of how Max Dash was supposed to be. And uh, you know, what we usually do when we face a new problem, something we want to solve, we think, ah, maybe it's uh, that might might be a little bit complicated, and we think for a while, and then. Someone shouts in the room, ah, it's very easy, I know we can do it in the code generation. And, and this has proven to be true in the entire history of this, uh, of this code, that whenever we wanted to realize something new, there was a bit of work in, in the code generation, but once this was fixed, we've, I mean, we've been able to extend this code in any direction we wanted because of this. It's really a flexible solution. Uh, another little... Uh, Another legacy story is that uh, the way the language was originally uh, defined was actually that this computer scientist, before writing any code, he asked uh, a couple of physicists what kind of syntax they would like. So effectively, how would you like to define a component? What, what, what should be in there? How would you like to, or how would you like to define your instrument file? And then they wrote these uh, synthetic uh, instrument files in a language that didn't exist, and then he created that language. So you don't need to define what is a mirror, which is a QG surface, uh, so you don't need to change. Yeah. So uh, I should uh, interject that I'm now building this instrument. I'm, I have a source, the source simple, which you will recognize from several things. I have put a reference point to onto which I can place my mirror and it will become apparent why I, I hope it will become apparent why I actually did it that way because I will have to have two two uh, sort of flat panel detectors in in um, in parallel or with restore neutron um, things to uh, be able to catch both the signals that we're we're doing we're letting through so this should also be relative to the reference point. And then... Um, ah, right, uh, this is right. You're correct. It should be. And I need a PSD. I call it flat one. It 
Oops, this is probably we just make it ten centimeters wide. And you I want need a file name there. This is true. And that should be at And I should also do a restore neutron. Or I could put them in a group. I'll do it like this. That should work. And I should put flat 2. <coughs> or rather, I should. I w now want to catch the um, the deflected beam. Did you put an R? Sorry, I'm confused. So I the first PSD that I put in was to is to catch the the part of the beam that just goes through. Yeah, no, but sorry, I was a few lines before uh, in the neuron. Uh, okay, um, I should say that I have defined a <coughs> look here. I have defined an ang a rotation angle of this uh, of this mirror. Yes, but projective equals R. What is R? Ah, um, R sorry. Oops. Um, it's, oh, I have sorry. defined an input parameter oh, called sorry, R. I, I missed that one. <laughs> yeah, but TH should go there as well. TH should go there as well. This is true. So that was good moment. And so I. And I need to define a rotation here. And if you think about it, this is the angle it should be rotated. Right. And so then I should position my second this is And that's actually it. You will need an N to terminate your trace section. This is also true. Right. And so that's written. I should now start a MCGUI. Possibly, yes. Right. So I open my instrument that I actually wrote totally outside. And so I have. Um, the default rotation of this thing, uh, thing is 45 degrees, so the deflected beam will go will go sort of upwards or in the to the left, whereas the obviously the transmitted beam will go straight ahead. Um, and so 
if I done this correctly. Mm -hmm. Unexpected. And then the component part is just happening. Then also those, those line 16. Line 16. Right, and there we need to. I think this is an oddity. This is possibly where it needs to Not work to me. Yes, X is not defined. So now you actually you go and make your your uh, polarization parameters. Hmm. So if I do this, yeah. I think it needs. Um, yeah. So now we actually have a compiler <laughs> component. <laughs> 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 yes, good, 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 good. <laughs> yeah. so, so what so I did. If you had it these, I mean, uh, it's of, of, of course okay to write your component in VI from completely from scratch. But if you had indeed uh, taken the arm, which is really the, the void component, if you like, if you had taken the arm and perhaps stripped off uh, the display section and replaced it by something else, uh, replaced the label arm, it, uh, the, the, the structure would have been there, and then you could go things in, uh, in declare, initialize it. What was the problem here? The problem was that uh, the restore neutron apparently in this release is not quite is halfway yeah. to the new release, yeah. which, to, okay. which yeah, is a bit of a already the third theme parameter. yeah yeah yeah. So yeah it already has them. These these parameters are known by by the system globally, and that's really the length of the state vector. And this is an old DTC version of the state sure. vector still there, patched by adding another state vector. So we are cleaning this up. Um, I'm cleaning this up Monday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Um. So uh, let's do a trace. Yeah. Should do a trace. Might as well. Right. Let's do a trace. So here's another example of why it is sometimes useful to use the actually use the GUI and get some help as to what parameters you actually need to, to use. So if we were to zoom in on this bit here, you see that most of the neutrons actually go through, whereas Um, I can see that I have, I can, this is, you go to uh, simulation, configuration options, it's kind of, and then you say three pane view with pgplot trace. And if I now run it again, I can see that I have should actually rotate it the other way around to get things to go to the other detector. <coughs> yeah. Let's see. 
So now you get the three pane view. But So you can now zoom in on each one of these. But you will see that most of my neutrons go through and some of them that some of them that hit and get reflected don't actually go to the other detector. So I made a slight mistake here. Again, which I need to correct, go away. Here's the way. Shift. I meant to define it this way. So if we were to run a simulation here, and plot it, we see this is then the straight one, and this is then the reflected one. And obviously we miss the mirror by quite some bit of the beam. So that's why but you can see the image of this, which is half the intensity of what's around here. So that seems to be working. Now, one thing I did want to do is, and the reason why I've actually thought of this as an example, is introduce another parameter into this component. Which I call a reflefrac, which is which will become apparent why that is a reasonable idea. And I will now instead of checking against the reflectivity, I will check against this reflefrac. And what is that? It is a uh, pretty much the same thing that is being used in, powder, in the powder end component, which is um, a parameter that is saying that if I were really interest interested only in the reflected beam, but I also wanted to know pretty much okay what uh, what the intensity of my uh, of my transmitted beam would be then I would want, like to use most of my statistics to go to the reflected beam, but I would like some of my statistics to go to the transmitted beam. But I'm not interested. I, I want lower resolution in the transmitted beam than I want in the reflected one. And this you can, and, uh, this you can do via this trick here. So I now check against an arbitrary number um, between 1 and 0 because it has to be, um, and as such, when I do scatter, I have to do something to P, which is the weight factor. And I do that by scaling it by the reflectivity over the possibility of actually choosing this Monte Carlo branch. And similarly, I should do it, do something, I should do something similar to the transmitted beam. And that will give me the correct, um, the correct intensities 
yet now I have the possibility to control how much of my statistics goes one to the one or the other direction if I were to want to be more interested in, in for instance in the powder in the single crystal component and in the powder component you have the option of actually steering your statistics towards say incoherent scattering or coherent scattering if depending on what you're interested in and you can leave some statistics if you're just interested in ballpark estimate of one or the other then then you can use this this kind of technique and so you basically scale the real probability by the Monte Carlo probability of choosing one or the other of the branches and well I now also need to put that as a as a parameter to my mirror and how do you say where the parameter is optional and uh, if I in my component um, sorry give it a default value here in setting parameters then, the then it becomes optional um, and obviously the default here is to put each uh, as much almost as much statistics go in the one way or the other so if I were to be more very much interested in the reflected fraction then um, this now there's oh if since there are no error bars in this you can it's difficult to see but uh, you could see it on the you, what the one parameter where you could see this is would be on the n where but i have made a mistake here does anyone know what it, what the mistake is well the thing is the the part of the beam that actually goes past the mirror and never hits it is never actually affected by this reflection uh, re by this uh, by this Monte Carlo choice or so of the part in the part of the um, you could perhaps see that in the middle of this left one the image is slightly noisier than it was before but the fact is only the uh, this technique where you scatter most of your statistics only obviously only affects the things that actually hit the monitor uh, hit the the mirror. Other the other the ones that go past it are obviously not affected by this. Uh, they don't have this uh, Monte Carlo choice. Um, this you could obviously split away by extent and uh, something like that, or you could you could make maybe if you make your beam sli uh, slightly smaller. So if you make your beam smaller than uh, the footprint on on the mirror, oh yeah, yeah, the rotated yeah. mirror. Say if I were to make it yeah. like so. Yeah. And we run it again. And if you look at these numbers now. If you look at the n values for this, this is then approximately 100,000, whereas this is 400,000. So there is a substantial more, substantially bigger. Um, <coughs> but and if you change but the uh, ratio, it's uh, a nice swap, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you can steer your statistics towards where you want your resolution if you're limited by computing time, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a poor man's split, if you want. Um, obviously, the intensity, 
the intensity number should not uh, uh, is still okay. I mean that shouldn't change. That doesn't change if you have enough statistics. And so that was what I was considering. What I the online uh, component writing presentation. Um, do we have uh, questions? Well, this one was a bit hard. <laughs> if you could have the, the two types, the simple ones that you were actually overwrote, <laughs> <laughs> and the new one which was cloud. I mean, the one where the reflectivity was not this uh, half concern. Okay. I can use the. If you could have that on the storage screen. That uh, I can do. Yes. Um, I'll put them Sorry, both. Uh, I'll <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I'll be happy to put that on uh, for your for reference. It looked like this. Um, yes, it is. I'll call just call this old, and then I'll. So in, in principle, you would uh, you would have a compiler directive in, in the share for including of your header file. Uh, this means uh, I think we even we have actually a syntax. It's percent include. It's documented in the manual. Mm -hmm. um, and and what it effectively does is that if you use more than one component of this class, you will only include it once in the code. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, this is certainly possible. And then, of course, when, when linking your final instrument, you need then to link against the library corresponding to your header file. But this is certainly possible. Mm -hmm. can you call, uh, what, what you can also do, which is uh, quite interesting, uh, <coughs> the copy keyword that you saw in the instrument file, which allows you to take uh, a component make a, an exact copy of it, perhaps changing one parameter. That sort of functionality is also available in the component file. So you can indeed uh, define a share as a copy of the share of another component or the initialize or the trace as a copy of another component. So this means that you can, you can have you know, components of a different name that really inherit most of the structure from some other component. Like uh, as, uh, as an initial or something like yeah, that? Yeah, 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 something like that. So, uh, well, even though we are not C++ and as such uh, object-oriented, uh, you know, we have uh, some of the same inheritance mechanisms still, you know. Mm. But hacked in there by means of, again, the code generation mechanism. Mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that concludes the, uh, the screencast, maybe.